Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Gay from Scratch, and today we are talking about Texture Paint Champ. Now what is this? Well basically it is an extension, a free extension I might add, for Unreal Engine that enables you to turn it into basically substance paint or light. What you see in front of you, this is Texture Paint Champ running in front of Unreal Engine, and let's uh, let's see what it can do. So you can see here I've got a material, I can paint it on another surface. There's a lot going on here, more than what you're just seeing here. Uh, you do have full control over all kinds of things, so I could sit here, take the normalist channel, really jack it up or weaken it down. I can paint, I can also come through here and erase as well. So you got a ton of functionality, but basically you can use this to paint one material on top of another surface in a non-destructive way inside of Unreal Engine. And there's, there's a lot more to it as well. I'll get back to some of the details later on. You got multiple different lighting modes, and then you can export your results out as a texture. But let me show you this from the very beginning. So first things first, you're going to want to grab this guy. It is available up on Gum Road. Uh, you'll see here there are uh, two options available. They are both completely free, literally. You go in. This is the one we were talking about today. There's also Decal Champ, uh, but we're going to look at Texture Paint Champ today. And what you do is basically come on in here, put it for $0 if you wish, and then go ahead and add it to cart. You can add it to your email account, and then you can go ahead and download it. Once you have downloaded it, you will find you have a zip file like this one. Basically extract out your zip file like so. And then you will, inside of that, have an Unreal Engine project. This is Unreal Engine 5 project. I'm using Unreal Engine 5. It should work in a newer version as well. And basically, just open that guy up. Uh, and it's a very quick to load file because it, it's a very simple project on the whole. So we will let this guy load up. And here we go. So now we are in our project. Let's uh, check one thing quick. Okay, good. I have Quixel Bridge enabled. Uh, let me just come on over here and dismiss that. What you do is come on down here to Content Browser, go to your uh, Texture Paint Champ, and open up this level. This gives you the basic level for setting up and working with your model. Uh, so now what we're going to need is a model uh, to, to actually draw. And what you want to do is drop your model onto this red circle as a reference. So that is forward, and that is the center point. So now what I'm going to do is come on in here. I'm going to go over to Quixel Bridge. So we'll use Quixel for all examples here. Uh, and I'm going to bring in a model and a material to work with. So let's go with the two that I have local. So this is the model we're going to do. We will add it to our project like so. And we're going to do the same thing with the moss and we will add it to our project like so. It should be fine. Okay, so now we have our two Quixel Omega scans here. We got our 3D asset. So what we do is just take our 3D asset, our Roman column, and drop it into the world. Now, what you may want to do is, again, position it so that forward is facing you, however you wish to do it. I don't really care. It doesn't have to happen. It's just easier if it does so. So we have our material, or sorry, our um, 3D object that we're going to work with in place. Uh, I like using Quixel stuff because their names are going to match up perfectly. It, it makes one of the steps later a lot easier. But here we go. You select your TPC underscore master here. And uh, now what you want to do is tell it what static mesh you are going to be painting. So you basically just come over here, pick the actor, pick the actor, and boom, you are ready to start with that guy. Now what you need to do is give it, uh, so when you do this, by the way, it should automatically figure out all of the materials attached to it, so all of your textures should come in place, and you'll note the names here, at, at, like the Elvado, Normal, Metalness, and DR channels there, while you bring in your paint material. This is the other guy we downloaded here, uh, could be whatever material you wish, oops, not over there, it's over here, Mega Scans, Surfaces, Mossy Ground, and then all I'm going to do is take mossy ground and apply it to my paint material. So now we have a material to paint with and an object to paint on. Now in this case, because they're the same uh, group, uh, they map up perfectly. Uh, so you don't have to do any mapping, but there's sometimes where you may actually have to do some mapping. So you see here, try auto map, it figured it out for us. So you see here, uh, it maps each thing. So the Elbado channel over, uh, it picks the right texture type, and then it gives it the name to match it to. So this is going to paint on Elbado. So just make sure that you match up to your names that are here, uh, and then it will work just fine. So if you've got a weird mapping, there's a whole lot more settings you can do. You can have it mapped to like the, the red channel specifically for doing a certain thing. So painting on this specific colors, you can have it to not paint at all. Uh, there is a detailed um, video on setting up all of this stuff on his YouTube channel. If you want to learn more, go there. I'm just covering the basics today. So we've got uh, that guy in. We've got a, So we've got our mesh in place and the material hooked up for it. Now all you need to do is press play. This will load it up into your editor. You'll see you've got this toggle here, right mouse button to turn 
on and off paint mode. By the way, if you want, I'll show you the settings in just a second, but you can remap this to like shift key or tab key or whatever if you find the right key confusing. You'll notice the mouse button kind of, um, sorry, mouse movement orbits. You got your WSD keys to navigate around the world. And you'll notice as I am moving around this object, this little paint circle is going with us and so on like so. So what we can do now is basically I'll right click, come over here and we can set a number of things up. So I can come over here, give like a, a brush style here. Uh, we can change out our size like so. And you're seeing an immediate preview over here. And then we basically just go on back in and paint. Right now I'm in like stamp mode. So each time I click, it's going to stamp it down. We could also go ahead. Let's go back here, for example, and switch this to like a paint stroke style. We'll switch it to stroke instead of brush. Uh, right click back here and then now you'll notice I can just do straight out painting like so. The other thing you can also do, uh, so go back over here, I can switch to an erase brush. Let's make this a lot smaller like so. And then again, you come in here and basically just erase whatever you don't want. Really powerful stuff here. Right now we're using uh, primarily albedo channel or configuring the albedo channel for strength. But you'll notice over here, I can come down here and we can switch out normal limits map. And you're going to see as I do this, it's going to show you the grand total result of it. So I can really jack up the normalness or we could do the same thing with the metalness, the various different maps. You've got control over their strengths here. Metalness isn't making a lot of sense on, uh, you know, uh, a mossy texture, obviously. So go back here to paint and you're going to see once again, uh, go over here where we've got a little bit empty spot. And we can just basically start painting. We're going to have the, the new normal map and so on in there. Now, another thing I'm going to show you, go back here to uh, one of these uh, various different texture tints. By the way, you can put more of these in if you're, yourself. You want to have your own brushes. You can create your own brushes, no problem at all. So go back over here to paint. Well, if you want to control, so example, you can see here, we're going in one direction. I can actually hold down the R key and my mouse wheel and we can orbit it. So if I was doing like a dripping of moss coming from that crack right there, I could do it like that and then just paint it down there or stamp it down there, however you wish to do. If you're wondering what the commands are, hit the P key uh, and it's very hard to see because of the, here, I'll put it so that there. Uh, you can toggle the UI on and off, toggle paint, move directions around. Uh, and then you've got control over the brush opacity, rotation, and so on. You can also switch between the lighting. So you see up here, you can turn the grid on and off, light on and off. And then here you've got seven different options for lighting. You can also toggle through these lighting options using the one through seven key. So you can see how your materials will look in the real world with a pre-configuring of lighting. And that is why you want to, when you first start this guy up, you're going to want to make sure that it's placed on, eh, it is placed on the dot. So that's what that dot is there for. It doesn't have to be, but that is the center point of the lighting rig. Uh, the other thing you're going to want to be aware of, come back in here. So there is your master settings. You go on down here. You've got a number of different preferences available here. So you can bring in, create your own brushes as well. Uh, so you can bring those in. Uh, you can change the... Um, the polling rate. So if it's not going uh, at the speed you want, you could set the update speed here to 0 0.1 or 0 0.2. And it's going to update. It's going to make your brush a little jittery, but it's going to update there. Again, if you want to toggle paint using something other than uh, the mouse button, you can switch it to the left shift or tab key here. So this is where all of your settings are available. Uh, pretty straightforward. Now, one thing I didn't show you is how you save. So we basically come on in here. Uh, you can you work on your image. So let's just do a quick uh, painting of something here, stroke. All right. So here is, here, let me just make that a little bit bigger. Here is my master pizza. Let's drag that over here a little bit more going on. All right, so let's say that was what I did. Now, when you're happy and done with your work, you basically just click Save Texture, and you got a wide variety of options here. So, for example, you know, uh, you can pick where to save it. This is configurable as well, by the way. Or you can say Save it in the original folder, and you can throw a suffix on it. So I'll just do my initials, MJF, stuck on the end there. Uh, you can also have it, so even if it didn't do certain texture painting channels, you can have it save them anyways, and you can actually have it create a new... Uh, new material instance for you as well. The thing I do find a little frustrating, so then you're done, you go ahead and save it, and then any second now, uh, it's gonna pop up down here that they have showed up, and then you go ahead and import them. Uh, one is a normal map, and we're good to go, etc. The one thing I find a little awkward, and I don't know if this is a limitation of it, because the author is certainly aware of it. Uh, let's go find, I think they'll save here. Yeah, so there is our image that we saved. All, all of our various images, so see the MJF extension on each one? So it saves each channel on its own, and it creates a new material instance for us. But the problem is, this material instance, it doesn't automatically get 
um, the updated version, which is a little frustrating. So if you want, uh, what you need to do is basically drop in that and then diddle for the normal. I don't know why this is a case because you're creating a new material instance anyways, but this is the one other step you've got to do in the world right now and save it. So now you've got your updated material instance and I could go close that down. Here is our unedited object. My new material is here. We can drop that on there. And there you see our new material instance is in place. So now if for example, you wanted to go ahead and grab a different texture, do multiple different kind of texturing on it, you could now use this material instance, uh, throw a new material, paint material on it and create something uh, even more complex. So a very cool add-on for sure. Uh, it is again available uh, here. Now he does have this quick overview showcase. Uh, now what you're going to want to do is actually, what? All right, that was weird. Probably something to do with YouTube and their uh, ad block or crackdown or whatever it is, even though I have YouTube premium. I don't get it. But anyways, what you see here, this is his channel. What you're going to want to do is instead of checking out this overview video, go to his channel itself. And the key ones here that you're going to want to check out, the paint, we mostly covered everything you need to know. But what you're going to want to know is this guy right here. This is how you could set up all the various different materials. There is a lot more to this than what I actually covered. And this video will walk you through that process. So uh, it it's a really powerful, again, substance-like tool, a very much substance light. A lot of the features are missing, but it allows you to paint on 3D objects directly inside of Unreal Engine completely for free. And I think it's pretty freaking cool. But let me know what you think. Comments down below. I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.